Hey guys, welcome to today's class. Have fun. Hi guys, so today we'll be talking about change of subject of simple formula. There's nothing much about it, so we're not going to waste much time on it. So I've listed like four questions and with after solving these questions, um, the knowledge of change of subject of formula is going to be very easy. Because these are basic questions that are, and basic formulas that we use. This one is for by finding volume. So they have basic formula we use and so there's no really big deal when solving for change of subject of the formula. So the question one says c over 5 equals f minus 32 over 9. And it says you should make c and f the subject of the formula. So what we are going to do first, we are going to make c the subject of the formula first before making f the subject of the formula. So guys, let us start. 1 equals c over 5 equals f minus 32 over 9. So mind you, we are starting with c. So what we'll do is, the first step is, Step one here equals is we are going to cross multiply. The first step is what cross multiply. Anytime you are giving a question like this and you are seeing um um two different you are saying this fraction equals this fraction, so you have to cross multiply. So step one we cross multiply and gives us. 9c equals 5 into bracket. Now multiplying this 5 with this. So 5 into bracket, f minus 32. And mind you, I'm making c the subject of the formula. So we just say c equals, we divide both sides by c. Let me write it out. Step 2 equals divide both sides by c by 9 rather by 9 so since you are making c the subject of the formula so 9 c over 9 equals 5 into bracket 5 f minus 32 over 9 so this cancels this so we are left with c equals 5 into bracket f minus 32 over 9 so it depends on you it depends on the way the question is so you can decide to open the bracket which is 5 f Minus 32 times 5. 32 times 5 equals 2 times, um, 2 times 5 equals 10. 5 times 3 equals 15 plus 116. So that is 160 over 9. So you can decide to you can decide to open the bracket and you can decide to just leave it, leave it like this. So both are actually correct. This and this are actually correct. So we have made C the subject of the formula. So because my body is small, I'm to going to have to go. I'm going to have to clean the solution and solve for F so we are done with everything. Or I may decide to solve question one, two, and three and leave question four for you to solve. So I'm going to raise you yeah, and clean the board now. So guys, yeah, now we want, we want to make f the subject of the formula. So as I said, the step one here, because we're having two opposite fraction, one fraction equals to the other fraction. So we are going to cross multiply. First step is cross multiply. So we say c, 9c equals 5, the same thing we did there, 32. But yeah, we want to make f the subject of the formula. So we say 9c, we open this bracket, 9c equals 5f minus 5 times 32 equals 160. I think we did that earlier on. So we have gotten that. So the second step here is collect. Step 2 here is collect like terms. Or we say, instead of saying collect like terms, because they are not really like terms here, we can say uh, we'll, we add 160 to both sides so if we add 160 to both sides 160 is going to cancel just imagine as we're saying minus 160 plus 160 here is going to give us zero yeah. so 160 is going to be cancelled here so we are going to add 160 here so that's what we are going to do so we have 9c plus 160 equals 5f minus 160 plus 160 and this gives us zero so we are left with 9c plus 160 equals 5f 
And mind you, we want to make f the subject of the formula. So what do we do? Step three here says divide both sides by the coefficient of divide both sides by the coefficient of what we are what we are we are after actually. And since we are after f, what's the coefficient of f, which is five? So we say divide both sides by five. So nine c plus one sixty over five equals 5f over 5 so 5 cancels 5 so we have f equals 9c plus 160 over 5 so we just made our f the subject of the formula so number two question says we should make her the subject of the formula don't let this one um make you scared it's actually very simple this 4 over 3 here is only for our pi. So this thing, I'm actually, I can actually rep repeat this as 4 over 3 pi times r square. This is just to show you that our pi is for, our 4 over 3 is for the pi only. If that it was like this, we would have said it's for everything. But it's just for only our pi. So it's 4 over 3 pi. So it's just as if we are saying this is the same thing. So we are going to do here. Step one here says divide both sides by r square. So we have v over r square equals four pi over three times r square over r square. R square over r square so it's going to let us um let us write everything together so as to avoid mistake four over three pi r square so over r square this cancels this so we are left with v over r square equals four over three pi so all we do here is cross multiply so four pi v equals no four pi r square sorry 4 pi r square equals 3v, okay? And we are looking for our r, right? So we divide both sides. Step 2 here, divide both sides again. There's no point of me writing it. So divide both sides by the coefficient of r, which is 4, four pi. So 4 pi cancels 4 pi. And 4 pi is here. So we are left with r square equals 3v. Sorry. r square equals 3v over 4 pi. So since we are left with r square and we need only half, what we are going to do here is we are going to square both sides. So when we square both sides, we are going to be left with our r. So the final answer here is r equals square root of 3v over 4 pi. So this is our final answer. R equals 3v root, the square root of 3v over 4 pi. So number 3 says y equals mx plus c. And we are making x the subject of the formula. So what do we do? I said, oh, so, okay, yeah, now step 1 here yes, says subtract c from both sides so if we subtract c from both sides c will be cancelled here and it will be added here so that is y minus c equals mx plus c minus c which is equal to zero so we now have y minus c equals mx mind you want to make our x the subject of the formula so step two here says we divide both sides by the coefficient of x which is m divide both sides by m so we have so we have y minus c over m equals x so I'll, let me write it for mx over m m cancels m so we have x equals y minus c over m
So the last question is x minus 4, x equals 4 into bracket 3c plus 2a. And we are making a the subject of the formula. So what we do here is we open back bracket. Step 1 here says open the brackets. So we have s equals 4 times 3c is 12c plus 4 times 2a which is 8a. So step 2 here says we are making a the subject of the formula. So step 2 here says subtract 12c from both sides. And mind when we subtract 12c from both sides, it's going to make our a on its own. Okay, so we say x minus 12c equals 12c minus 12c plus 8a. This is 0. So we have x minus 12c equals 8a. I'm sorry? 8a. So step 3 here says divide both sides by a, which is by 8 rather, which is the coefficient of what we are looking for, which is a. So x minus 12c over 8 equals to 8a over 8. 8 cancels 8. So we have a equals x minus 12c over 8. So now we just made a the subject of the formula. So with this simple with this simple um questions, the four questions that will be given. So when you come across any question on change of subject of simple formula or change of subject of formula, you're not going to find it as I told you when we see two fractions we do what we cross multiply first and we'll do the necessary uh, the necessary adjustment we either collect like times uh, or we add or subtract to a particular uh, to a particular number we add like what we did here we subtracted from 12c we subtracted 12c from both sides so that we could cancel 12c and we'll be left with our 8a so that we could also leave our a on to be be on its own so there's not really much things on change your subject of the formula. It's actually very simple. So with these few questions, there's no question you come across that you find difficult to answer. Thank you. I hope the class was interesting. If you have questions, please drop them in the comment section or send us an email. We would love to help you further. See you in the next class.